once told me I got a lot of love and respect for my OGs. A lot of us turn out the predicate felons, not I. My brethren's addicted to selling, slip the turn to somebody's cellar. I wish that somebody would tell us then. Tell us, then. Tell us chances were slim when you dancing with sin. It, was sin. Uh. it all start from within. Sway Boomer's back when I was charging him 10. ten. Who would have knew I would rock them events? I rock with my young G's, that's just common sense. Static selector. Yeah. Joey Badass. Nasir. girl miss ruby v and this is the boom bap hour uncut we are here with a very very special guest moreno how you doing hey what's up what's up it's moreno i'm fine yes we're so happy to have you today definitely and um so tell us all of our listeners all about you as an artist and where are you from since you've given us that international love? <laughs> so my name is Moreno. I actually do rap music and I'm from Austria, Austria, Vienna in Europe. <laughs> People confuse it sometimes with Australia, but <laughs> no, we are all Austria from Europe. So we don't have kangaroos, only in zoos. <laughs> and um, I'm here to promote my reggae rap album, you know, it's called One Strength and One Unity. It's a collaboration album that I did with Herb Seed from Jamaica. So, yeah, uh, basically it's about, you know, um, our spirituality, uh, how we can unify no matter what color you have, we just should be together as human beings. We should not... Um, divide ourselves by colors by any means necessary and of course you have to also open up your third eye you know spiritually you have to be more open and of course smoking the marijuana which um yes will actually take you even further into the spiritual plane exactly in another That's realm <laughs> another realm uh, look talk about open up that third eye check it out Oh yeah, I see that. I see that. Already there now with I the, pos the positivity is now flowing. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So your newest song, uh, Mandela. So tell us the inspiration behind doing a tribute, of course, to the great Nelson Mandela. Yeah, so um, basically this song is now actually very old, but I can tell the story behind. Um, I wanted to do, uh, because I'm not a real fan of politicians, but Nelson Mandela kind of stood out because he was a, a guy way over his time. I mean, basically the, the way he um, survived everything, you know, the upper height uh, situation. Um, he was actually the first uh, black president in South Africa, which is, when I think about it, that actually there are many Africans in South Africa, but it, 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 through the history, when the colonizers came and, and it ruined everything, and, and Nelson Mandela, he was just like a fighter, you know? He never backed down. He stood for his beliefs. Um, so basically my inspiration was to make a tribute to his song because he already passed away and 
and I wanted to make a very, very special song. So I was hitting some uh, South Africans because the hook is made by local South Africans. They made the hook and I hooked with them up on Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, and we both came into a conclusion that we should do a song about Nelson Mandela. So he gave me the beat. Uh, I, I was watching many, many Nelson Mandela documentaries so I could learn what exactly can I rap about him, talk about him. And basically that's how it came to fruition, Nelson Mandela song. So, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, what a wonderful tribute. And, um, you know, just some more information about your song. And actually about, uh, in your bio, um, it just describes as your lyrical storytelling flows over a fusion of gritty tones and reggae soundscapes. And Mandela's also featuring, is it Daje Jobo? Daje Jobo, yeah, yeah, yeah. And his uncle, and Tote Bosasanye. Uh, okay. He made the hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these One. are South African speakers. That's awesome. Um, says it's set to wake and remind the masses of the fight for justice um, the Mandela sought to, sought to the very end. So tell me, how did the song, uh, how did it feel making the song, collaborating with the other artists? How was that experience? Oh, it's a wonderful experience because um, you have to know that um, it's not an everyday life that you connect with people and they have the same uh, vision like yourself and um, I don't know how to describe it because as an artist I'm always happy if I can work with other artists around the world so it's an honor and it's a blessing too so I'm counting my blessings so I'm, I thank God every day that he gives me these blessings to work with people and, and you know Nelson Mandela like you said he fought for freedom for justice you know, for great opportunities, and he's worth mentioning. You know, I want to give the knowledge to my audiences when they listen to Nelson to the song Nelson Mandela. Then they would say, "Oh man, this guy really stood up for something." You know, so that's basically why we made that record uh, with myself and my brother. And yeah, right. That's that's, that's basically. <laughs> And what a wonderful collaboration. I mean, because you're in Austria and then South Africa and all that come together and it just all brings together, you know, the whole concept of, you know, everyone unifying together. And that's, you know, that's what we need right now in this climate exactly. that's going on in the world. So, you know, what a timely and inspiring message that, you know, you all put together. So uh, that's so wonderful. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and where do you find your artistic inspiration? What inspires you when, you know, you get up and you say, like, hey, I'm feeling like putting the song together. What, what is your, you know, uh, inspiration? What kind of just triggers you to say, uh, oh, yeah, put that together? Oh, it's basically everywhere. When I go to the streets or when I just go um, shopping or when I wake up from my, you know, when I wake up from my bed and I'm thinking some of a rhyme and it, I just write it down on a piece of paper. And mostly my inspirations come from news, um, movies, TV series, um, basically what I read on the newspapers, um, practically everywhere. Okay, okay. So I get well, inspiration. Or, and of course, anyway. and. Yeah, I have, and of course, uh, basically also for my uh, rap uh, rappers that I look up to, you know, um, or reggae musicians that I look up to. So basically, they give me some kind of inspiration to do, you know, whatever comes in my mind to write it down and make a perfect song. Definitely. Okay, okay. Uh, so we love to ask... Um, our artists this important question what made yeah. you fall in love with hip-hop oh, I knew you were gonna ask it because you asked the same question to Frederick too <laughs> mm -hmm. we watched... love hearing answers to that so so I will basically come I will basically come with the same answer that you know for the love of hip-hop 
I am hip hop. Rap is what we do, but hip hop is what we live. So that's basically it. That's right. That's right. You live the culture, so that's that's super dope. Yes, yes, exactly. definitely. Mm-hmm. So tell us how can we find everything as far as your you know website, social media. Like how can we find all of your music? Okay. Um, you can find me on YouTube, uh, Skin Devil Entertainment, basically on YouTube music channel. Um, you can find me also on social media like Instagram under Moreno Skin Devil, uh, Facebook Moreno Skin Devil. Yeah, that's basically it. Okay. All right. Well, what we're going to be doing after this interview is definitely playing Mandela and you guys are in for a real treat. So definitely just, you know, keep it locked. And um, thank you again, Marino, for joining us today from across the world. We got to come over and see y'all so we can, you know, we want to want to start a boom bap hour tour. So definitely got to put Austria on on the list, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> on the map. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Oh, I, I would love to do that. When this crisis is all over, we should meet and hook up. <laughs> yes, we should. We should. I'm so excited to do that. I just love meeting artists around the world. I mean, this is just an opportunity that, you know, sometimes you just don't run into all the time. So uh, this is great meeting new people and new artists every time. So um, thank you again so much for joining us. And, um, all right, now it's Moreno, straight out of Austria, and keep it locked. It's the Boom Bap Hour Uncut. Yeah, 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 we back. Wow, wow, wow. Boom Bap Hour Uncut. Feeling good on this vanilla. That was a flavor. Man, that man, interview man, was flavor man. with the homie Moreno. Yeah, yes, man. Yo, Austrian man. god. Absolutely. Yo, dude was hype. What? Yes, he was. Yes. Who had the glasses on? He had the glasses yeah. on. Trevor. Yes, <laughs> talk about... Uh, um, the third eye. He's talking about all that, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, he was definitely on it, right? Uh, so that was definitely interview, and also, you know, um, definitely enjoyed that cut from his album as well. Yes. So, uh, Steve Harvey shares his thoughts on Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan's Valentine's Day celebration. Okay, wait, she picked him. Uh, MBJ, that, that's who she got. That, that yep, yep. They oh. they are in love, and they had an extremely extravagant Valentine's Day. Um, so Steve Harvey shared his thoughts on his stepdaughter Lori Harvey's relationship with Michael B. Jordan. But before he said what he thought of the actor, he had to one, make one thing clear. He said he's a nice guy, but he's not the sexiest man alive to me at all. Uh, refer, referencing the actors given the title of 2020 Sexiest Man Alive by People. Uh, he said he gave the t- Steve Harvey gave the title to himself. Talking about all these people I'm paying for. Hell, if they ain't sexy, what is? <laughs> <laughs> He said, well, I've never been attractive. I knew that. That's why I had to come up with these damn jokes. But this kid, I like him, right? Then, so Jimmy Kimmel says, well, he rented out like the entire aquarium for your daughter. And he says, yeah, well, good luck, homie. He said, you know, Valentine's come every year. I don't know if you know how this works or not, but I don't know how you're going to top that. But good luck, partner. You must be coming out with a Creed 4, 5, and 6. (laughs) Yo, this nigga retarded. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yes, yes, yes. So, so wait, hold on. Lori Harvey ain't really his daughter, is he? It's his stepdaughter. Right. So he didn't make her right. So uh, he don't give a not. fuck about her and her who she fucking. Her I real mean, daddy care. I mean, she's the young. real daddy. She is young. She, you know, just, she's not that yeah, young. That's not his real, yeah, real it's daughter. His stepdaughter. Oh wow. Yeah. She ain't that young. Ah, well, she's that, in her 20s. That, that, that twat been around the block a little, a little something, something, something. Uh, uh, <laughs> she ain't well, that young. <laughs> a I lot mean, of dudes say they tap that. Well, maybe Lori, well, maybe Lori didn't decide she wanted to settle down and Michael <sighs> obviously sees something right in her. So, hey, there you go. You know. Yeah, Is she, I mean, like these young boys crazy over her though. 
But what is so special right? about her? <laughs> she got to do some right shit. She could be. I ain't, I've never like I never really seen she like a picture that just made something. me go, oh man, who is she? Right, right, right. <laughs> she's super. Head, she's hey. super head twenty twenty one. That's what y'all saying. Hey. Hey. She's super head twenty twenty one. And beyond. She gobbling them she up. She gobbling. Throw babies. She got the throw baby. She the new throw, throw baby. Throw baby. 